Welcome to Life Abridged with your host, Eric Wallier. Running. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So, last episode, I talked about my top 10 favorite movies of all time. I thought it was a pretty good episode. Uh, I'm a big movie guy. I'll talk about them any chance I get. But some people shared with me their top 10s, which was awesome because uh, one of them uh, was shared by Taylor. Shout out to Taylor for sharing hers. Uh, had the movie Jojo Rabbit on it. It was her second favorite movie of all time. And I actually had wanted to watch this movie previously because it's by one of my favorite directors. None of his other movies were on my list, but they were close. Specifically Hunt for the Wilder People, which is also a very good movie. But uh, the movie Jojo Rabbit was on hers. So I decided to watch it because I had heard good things about it previous to that. And boy, am I glad I did. Because the movie was fucking incredible i mean it's probably my favorite movie of all time now either first or second i don't know it's tough to say but wow i mean you gotta go watch this movie this that's not a recommendation that's in order this is you you can't not like this movie it's for everybody it's just it's so good so Yeah, I'm glad, Taylor, you shared yours. Uh, Some other people did too. My one friend had the movie The Revenant on his. And, you know, I thought a lot about that movie. I have thought a lot about that movie. It's definitely a good movie. But for me, the problem is, I mean, this is very personal, but it just isn't very realistic. Because, I mean, I just, I don't think if I fought a bear, the bear would even have a shot at beating me. So, that kind of ruins the whole premise of the movie for me. I mean, I'm pretty sure I could, I could win in a fight against a bear. You might say otherwise, like, they're monsters, they're huge. And yeah, a lot of smart people do, but... You're not going to change my mind unless I were to actually fight a bear and lose. That's the only way I would ever think differently. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I could beat up a bear. Most bears. Maybe not polar bears. I'll give them that. But yeah, I would, I would beat up bears. I wouldn't be in Leonardo DiCaprio's scenario. So I just really, I couldn't get into it. It's a good movie, though. I mean, if you like it, if you think bears are strong, I mean, that's on you, I guess. But still a good movie. I get why he had it on there. So go watch that episode if you haven't after this one. Uh, And really share your top 10 with me because I do want to know. I think it's really interesting. I mean, it doesn't even have to be your top 10. Maybe just a few of your favorites. It It doesn't really matter, but I would like to hear it. I really would. So go do that. And thank you for sharing if you did. And Jojo Rabbit, I mean, it's just like, it's amazing. So go watch it. I don't know what else to say. I wouldn't even be offended if you turned this off right now and went and rented that. I mean, it's it's so good. But anyways, uh, moving on. You know, uh, I've been getting some comp- uh, comments about my hair. Some compliments, some not compliments. But it kind of is getting out of control. It's the longest it's ever been, which I'm actually kind of okay with. I, I kind of like it how it is. Eventually, whenever barbershops and whatever open back up, I'll probably go get a cut, but I'm not even 100% sure because maybe I'll just let it grow out. 
I do. I think I look better with longer hair. I don't know. Um, we'll see. I th- I think I like it. So this quarantine isn't all bad. It made me realize maybe it's time to switch my hairstyle up. I actually have a pretty funny story about getting my hair cut. It was, I don't know, probably three, maybe four years ago, probably like three years ago. Uh, it was when I was working at Tim Hortons, which I used to work at. And when you work there, you had to wear a visor and like a hairnet for obvious reasons. So, I mean, I get really bad, uh, really bad hat head or helmet head or helmet hair. What do they call that? I don't know, you know, and that's just with like a regular hat with a hairnet. My hair would just get so like messed up. It would like get bunched up in the front and like the back would get all messed up. So, uh, I remember one week I wanted to get a haircut that week, but the problem was I was working like a lot and the place I go to get my haircut kind of had not weird hours, but Basically, they were open the exact same times I was working, except for, I think it was like Thursday nights, they would be open later to like eight o'clock. Well, that Thursday, I was like, all right, I'm going to work. And then right at when I get out of work, I'm going to go get my hair cut. I got out maybe at like 637. So it didn't leave me a lot of time. But I got, I, so I get out of work and... I decide that I don't have time to take a shower, which I would have liked to do because I probably didn't smell very good. And like I said, my hair got all messed up, which isn't that big of a deal if you are like a normal person. But when I go to the haircut, go get to get, go to get my haircut. I don't like, um, I forgot to start my timer again. I don't like getting my hair washed by the hairstylist just because, I don't know, I'm weird and I don't like the feeling of it, which is not normal because I know a lot of people think it feels like a massage, but not to me. So I always try to like shower beforehand whenever I get a haircut and come in with my hair pre-washed so you can just sit down and get a cut, which... I wasn't able to do to do that day. So instead of just going there and asking for them to wash my hair before I got it cut, I decided to just kind of wash my hair in the sink. So I put a little bit of shampoo on my hand and started my sink and just kind of ran my hands under the water and then like ran it through my hair, which is usually fine, which... I thought it was. So I go to get my hair cut. There's like no one there. It's like 730. They're about to close. They call me over to come sit in the chair. And uh, I get in the chair and she asks me what I want. So I tell her what I want. And she's like, okay. And she starts cutting. I don't remember exactly what she was doing, but she was like feeling the front, like doing her thing. And then she gets to like, my neck, the bottom of my hair, and I feel her run, feel her run her hands through it. And she's like, why is your hair so sticky? And then she pulls her hair, her hand out. She's like, what is this? And her hand was, (laughs) it was, it was covered in like shampoo, which because I was trying to shampoo, shampoo my hair in the sink beforehand. And I obviously didn't get it all out. And she was looking at it like, is this, shampoo and uh yeah part of my soul died that day and I was like yeah uh I guess I tried to wash it before I got here and she's like she was just she was pitying me she was uh it was a tough time for her it was a tough time for me she was like you know we can wash your hair here I was like yeah and then she took me over to get the shampoo out and she got it out and then she cut my hair and I went home 
And then I never went to that place ever again. Uh, so, you know, that's a, a good story, I guess. Uh, but anyway, um, what else is new? But yeah, that was, that was when I worked at Tim Hortons. That was a interesting time. Uh, I still work in food service. It's a little different now, but working at Tim Hortons, it was, it was interesting. I was actually thinking earlier today, if karma is a real thing, like it's a, a force in the universe that always evens everything out. I mean, I don't really believe that, but hey, maybe. What are the rules for like food service and working at like a fast food drive through Because I feel like that isn't fair. My time at Tim Hortons uh, was good, but to be honest, I probably annoyed a lot of people by messing up orders, which I did a lot. And, you know, partially that's my fault. Maybe it's partially Tim Horton's fault. It's kind of mismanaged. We have so many, we had so many things on the menu. I mean, it was mostly my fault, but I mean, just looking back on it, we would serve hundreds of people every single day. And if I mess up some of their orders, and kind of ruin their day. That's a lot of bad karma on me. So I got to pay for that eventually. But I mean, that's not fair. Like, does the good karma count at least? Because maybe that helps. But I probably have more bad karma uh, throughout my time there. I've probably messed up more orders than I got right. No, that's, I'm just kidding. That's probably not true. Well, no, I don't think that's true. I, I actually have another funny story about that, too. Uh, I remember when I was working at Tim Hortons, I went to the dentist one day in the same town, my hometown, that the Tim Hortons was. And the lady who was about ready to do my teeth cleaning asked me where I worked. So I said, Tim Hortons. And she was like, oh, which one? And I told her the one, uh, well, I actually worked at two at the time. I told her one. They're both very close to each other. And then she goes, oh, I was at this other one, which is the other one I also worked at. She's like, oh, I was at this other one the other day. And I went through the drive through to get a breakfast sandwich, but I got it on a croissant. And when I got my order... The croissant was burnt so bad it was black. And she's like, how could anyone send that out the window? I mean, who would do that? And I was just sitting there like, man, I don't know who would do that. I mean, <laughs> that's just, that's so rude. And yet, the other day, relative to the story, I was making the breakfast sandwiches and, you know, we got to the last croissant and I accidentally burnt it. So I had to either tell the person that we're out of croissants or I could have just gave it, gave her the well done croissant. So hoping maybe this person would like the well done croissant. I just sent that out the window. But uh, obviously it was the dentist who I gave that to. And I never told her that because she had pointy, sharp things in my mouth. So I thought it would be best to just say, yeah, there's some dumb people that work there, which was me at the time. Uh, so two good stories there, Eric. But yeah, uh, I still am working in food service, which kind of sucks, but it's okay. Anyway, it's it's been pretty interesting with this whole coronavirus thing we've been open the whole time because it's a pizzeria and a lot of our business already was takeout so it's kind of convenient for us that people still need to be fed and we are still feeding people 
I think we'll make it through this, so that's good. But I remember when it first started, uh, the first thing we did was close our dining room, which I'm pretty sure we had to do that because the governor uh, signed some executive order or something that I think you had to close at 8 p.m. at the time and you couldn't have anyone in your dining room. So we closed our dining room. That's the first thing we did. And when we did that, we also shortened our hours. We were open like, we would be open normally 11 to nine, but since this started, we're technically open 12 to seven, Monday through Friday. Saturday and Sunday uh, were closed. We're usually open Saturdays, not Sundays normally. So, I mean, being closed Saturdays is the only new thing. We've always been closed Sundays. Uh, so we did that. It didn't affect me too much. I, I actually was working more hours when this first started, when we shortened our uh, schedule, just because I'd be there from open to close every day pretty much every day. Although since then it has changed a little bit. I have lost a few hours, but nothing serious. I'm still getting a good amount, amount of work. So that's good. Uh, but anyways, after that, maybe it was like a week, maybe less. Um, it's a little fuzzy, but we, that's when we put uh, tape on the floor to mark off like where people have to stand to stay six feet apart. And then we had one just like right in front of the register that people had to stand behind when they were being cashed out. So we did that for a while and it went okay, I guess. People did not, some people did not like it whatsoever. They would complain. Just, I don't know why, but they're just the type of people that have to complain. Uh, so we did that and then... Uh, somewhat more recently, they made the, in at least in New York, you have to wear a mask in public. I don't know if you have to, but pretty much everyone does. So we started wearing masks. We started making customers wear masks. If they didn't have a mask, they'd have to either go get one, or if they had an order in, they'd have to like wait outside. We'd get their money, come back in, stuff like that. And then... That's pretty much where we we're at. The only thing that's changed is we now have like a little plexiglass thing, like a shield in front of our cash register that makes it so people don't have to stand six feet away anymore, which is good. It's a lot more convenient. Them standing six feet away was super annoying. Um, I mean, for us and the customer. So luckily we got that. And yeah, it's just takeout only, obviously. Uh, we're still wearing masks. The masks are super annoying. It's been a few weeks now, and I'm starting to get like chafing on the back of my ear. It's not that big of a deal, but it is annoying, and it does kind of hurt. I couldn't imagine being like a doctor or a nurse who has to do it for way longer, for, you know, 12 hours a day, every day. That would suck. I've seen things that kind of get around it, like you could put it on your glasses and stuff, but I'm not at that point yet. Maybe I will, though, in the future, depending how long we have to keep wearing these masks for. Um, we're doing pretty good business-wise, though. When it first started, like when we first had to close our dining room, it was bad. I know my owners thought, we would eventually end up closing because we were doing like 70, 80% less business. Uh, the only thing that kept us afloat was it was a Lent and we do a fish fry, which usually I hear is pretty, pretty popular. But this time around, a lot of restaurants and churches that would also do it, they had to completely closed down so people were struggling to find fish fries so on fridays friday nights we would do 
just insane business, like nonstop phone ringing. We would sell close to hundreds of fish. I mean, that's why we stayed in business because of Fridays for a few weeks there, like maybe even a month during Lent. It was just so popular. Friday nights were just chaotic, but that's what kept us in business. So I guess that's good. It didn't seem like like anything was wrong uh, Friday nights for a while there just because everyone was, was out getting takeout. But yeah, now, like I said, we're slowly getting back to where we were. Our lunch hour before all this happened was mostly like people working at the business park right by us. But most of those businesses are closed. I mean, people are not going out to work as much anymore, obviously, and they can't stay in the dining room. So that pretty much killed our di- or our lunch hour, which is still pretty bad. Uh, like I said, though, it's getting slowly a little bit better. Maybe uh, in a month or so we can open back up our dining room. I really have no idea. But yeah, like I said, it it is starting to get uh, a little bit better. Although now we are having trouble getting meat because a lot of the meat suppliers are closing down due to the virus. I think some of them are either choosing to reopen or are being forced to because, I mean, you need meat. So we're kind of feeling the effects of that. It's not too bad yet. I don't think it'll ever get, like, dire. But we are having some trouble getting, like, the meats we're used to, at least from the brands we're used to. So that's kind of interesting. We'll see how that plays out. But, yeah, overall, I've been just hanging in there grateful to be working it's interesting how people have adapted to this it almost feels like completely normal i i don't think this will be the normal forever but you know we just adapt as humans and you just kind of get used to things which is definitely where i'm at i know when i first started this podcast i would talk about how I used to get like so scared because of what was happening, but now it's like, whatever. I don't, nothing really freaks me out. What's going to happen is going to happen. And I think hopefully we'll get back on track soon. It's kind of a weird time now. Some people are dying to get back, think it's necessary we get back. Other people, you know, they're think it's necessary we stay the way we're staying right now. Uh, I personally don't have too much of an opinion. I think it's a hard thing to have an opinion on. I just am kind of going with the flow. Hopefully, though, things can get back to normal soon. Anyway, I I didn't have too much of a theme for this episode. I figured I'd kind of just ramble. I've been editing, I edit my podcast a little bit, you may have noticed, but as I edit them, sometimes I have, like, I think something that either I want to add or I want to correct, and I didn't know how to do that at first, so I'm going to try out something, maybe like an editor's camera or like an editor's box or something that as I'm watching this back, I can, you know, add more input or make fun of myself, which I've wanted to do a couple times. I uh, I was actually going back through, I don't remember which podcast it was, but I was editing it, and I got to this point where I was expressing some thought, and I kept saying, I think. I said it like six times in 30 seconds. I was able to take some of the I thinks out, with it still making sense, but I couldn't get rid of all of them. So I I was like, I think, I think, I think. And I I thought it was pretty funny. I just wanted to make fun of myself. But um, yeah, just stuff like that. Stuff I forget to mention. I want to be able to mention. So I'm going to try out like adding something in post. Maybe with like a sound effect or something. We'll see. So yeah, that might... You might see that in a future episode. 
And then I also have a new video up on my main channel. It'll be linked in the description or you can just search my name or you may be even subscribed. So go check that out. It's a throwback to the older type of videos I make. You know, they're supposed to be funny. They're scripted. So yeah, go check that out. And thank you for listening.